Greetings, 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 subscribers. Welcome, new subscribers. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Patreon, and here. Thank you for being here with me today, liking and sharing the videos, and engaging uh, in the content that we post here. We appreciate you. Before I went into path working, I needed to go back to this book again, and I wanted you to see it and have eyes on it too. And I'm glad I was able to find one online for you to review with me. So great, 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 great. We're doing a great job here. Let me see what you're seeing. Okay, so you're seeing what I'm seeing here. So let me get back over there so we can see the same thing and I can read this uh, to you. And you see some of the, and they, and what's so great about this book is they underline some of the same things I underlined. It's something they underline, they mark their book exactly like I mark my book. So let's jump in here because before we go into path working, we want to understand who the or Orisha are. We want to understand who they are and how they're connected to us. You, this is why it's closed. This is one reason why it's closed, because this is ancestral. You have some Orisha that were ancestors that were, went on to be deified. This is why it's closed, and this is why it's ancestral. Okay? Yoruba is the divine journey to the inner self and the God consciousness. Again, we're going back to consciousness again. If you think this doesn't have anything to do with consciousness, you are mistaken. And this video is for the ones who have been doing the ancestral work. They've been doing the healing work and they're ready to take it to another level and they're ready to go to the astral plane. And what this, what we're doing now, we're going with what you guys call going to the fourth or fifth dimension. This is what we're doing. This is where this is at, where you understand that your body, you are not your body. Once you understand it and surrender that body and see yourself for what you truly are, then you can move about because you understand that your consciousness, you are not the body. You are the consciousness inside of the body. But once you understand that you're fully consciousness, you are free to travel to the and, and, uh, and astral world. The indigenous Yoruba has belief in the existence of self-existence being who is believed to be responsible for the creation, maintenance of heaven and earth, of men and women, and who also brought into being divinity, spirits, who are believed to be the functionaries in the theocratic world, as well as the intermediaries between mankind, the self-existent being. The Yoruba word God is both the Olodumare and the Oloran. There is no doubt that the African conceived the one God theosophy eons before external foreign influence. You see that put there? I have to stop right there. I have to stop right there because that's very interesting that that's there which i'm going to come back to this in the next video i probably won't even go into this in this video i might just save this for my sister circle in regard to traditional systems in general and specifically in yoruba religion the absurdity of such views are related to the lack of spiritual religious substance of those who hold them. To say that one religion pagan is to say that they are all pagan. I've always said, I said, if, they, if we're pagan, they're pagan too, because they learned everything from us. So you can't be, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to even say that. Okay. Now we're going to go jump over here where it says those beings right here, we're right here now, those beings which are deemed angels by Western definition are known to Yoruba as Orisha. 
The aspirate is directed to see the Orisha as animation of the one source or, or Oladumare. The Orishas are not simply mythological constructions designed to satisfy the lower mind and intent of the humans. As angels in all religious contexts, the Orishas were created and sent by the Oladumare to assist in the spiritual evolution of humankind. So they are what are, what are they? They're angelic beings. See, the ancestors had the angels had told me that that was I was I was like so it's ancestors that's angels. They was like yeah, that's really where it all come from. And I was like what? Yeah, it was like you need to get over there because you got some healing that you need to be doing. They had been telling me to heal, but I was like heal what? Heal what? And that's why I tell you you can you can. Um, you can normalize abuse, abuse and not know it. In the Judeo-Christian culture, the word for angel signifies the work as messengers, but other words for angels signify their essence. They are called gods, the sons of gods, ministers, servants, watchers, the holy ones. They constitute the court of heaven. Although Judeo-Christian's emphasis is clear, it needs to be fully realized the concept of angels existed long before the their arrival. For example, the Yoruba concept of ancestors, Orisha, as messengers of the Oladumare, were in effect thousands of years prior to Judeo-Christianity. Native people throughout the world speak of being shown rituals by the holy messengers and of being shown how to farm domesticate animals. Ancient people of all world cultures depict angelic beings as seen throughout their cultural eyes. They were helpers in their survival of raising their nations. The reality of angelic forces is based on faith and conviction in the Yoruba religious system. One must believe in the Orisha in order to ascend to God consciousness in order to reach the divine state of human being. Okay, so you're seeing that there. Okay, so who are the Orisha? They are the angelic beings. And this book is by Baba Ifa Karade. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The Handbook of Yoruba Religious Concepts. This is the name of the book. Helpful information in here. Okay, we're going to go past that. Because what I want to show you. Okay, so let me just go by there because again, I want you to understand that this is consciousness. We are raising our consciousness to the fourth and fifth D. This is where this is at. We're talking about virtual reality, the astral travel. This is where we're at. That's consciousness, being able to astral travel, uh, to do out-of-body experience. It takes you being able to move your consciousness outside of your body. And when you shamanic journey, that's basically what you're doing. You're being able to shove that consciousness out of your body and to create a, your own astral body, your own light body to travel. It says the teachers of Onamelia provide religious aspirants with the means of potential to reach what is called in Yoruba translation alignment. By studying the Ifa corpus, the once oral scriptures pass from priestly generation to the next, devotees strive to reach a state of divine oneness. That oneness comes about when one's earthly consciousness, going back to consciousness again, that oneness, oneness comes about when one's earthless consciousness, known as the Ori, developed and elevated to the place of unification with one's heavenly consciousness, known as the Imponri. Ordinamilia teaches that such is an endeavor, an arduous, difficult, and takes years of soul searching and effort. Those who embark on the journey 
Erin Ajo need to need so with a pure heart, with sincerity. For although the attainment is glorious, the pitfalls are horribly devastating. Wisdom and ritual transcendence are the key elements of Ornamia's teachings, and they are bound by the African culture interpretation. There is no difference here in light of all world religions. So he's telling you, you have to elevate your consciousness. Okay, so I wanted to bring it, go over that, couldn't skip over that before we get to the other section. I like this section because uh, he tells you how to do the Odu, tells you a little bit about the Odu, and gives you different perspectives on here. A biblical, Oriental, it's really something how he lines this up. Really good book, need to get it. You need to get it. If you don't have it, you should have it in your library. Okay. And he's just talking about the Adu here. The Orisha as the angelic forces. See him talking about this here? The Orisha as the angelic forces. So when we speak of uh, Orisha in this matter, you see how attainable they are to you. Again, we're going through the ancestors we're going we're we're working with the orisha by way through the ancestors and through these angelic forces okay i'm not gonna go there he's he's giving you the just the list of the orisha their attributes what they do this person has took a lot of taking a lot of notes in this book. And then I like here because he goes, he breaks down to what herbs you can work with them with when it comes to spiritual baths and things like that to connect with them. They advise you to get these herbs when you start working with those erisians. So this, like I said, this is a really good book to have. See how he breaks it down? He's telling you that the herbs, even the Spanish herb. See, he's, he's, he's showing it to you. He's showing you these herbs. So if you were to take a spiritual bath or create a spiritual bath to work with these, you can, you can do that. Or if you wanted to give an offering, you know what herbs they are. Okay, this is where I wanted to get you to so you can understand that the Orisha are inside of you. I like the way he broke it down. He broke it down in, in the Eastern format and the Yoruba format. Because you remember that all these uh, religions come from the divine feminine. All these religions come from the divine feminine, which I'm going to, I'm not going to break that down here. I'm not going to break that down here. I'll break that down in the Patreon group, but I'm not going to break it down here. I'm break it down in the sister circle. Okay, so you'll see uh, the seventh chakra is the Ori. The sixth one is Ornamilia, the third eye. The fifth one is Abatala, the throat region. Then you have the heart chakra. Uh, which is Ogun. Then you have the solar plexus. The navel ridge, uh, region is uh, Oshun. And the second one is Yamoja, uh, which is the reproductive uh, region, the sacral chakra. And then the root chakra is Shango, near the anal region. So you see that these Orisha live inside of you. And each of these have their different planes of existence. All of them are portals. Let me just say that. They're all portals that you can go inside of once you start unpeeling that and healing that, you can connect with those Orisha. And I think I have some Orisha meditations on this, um, on the channel. That's because I was doing the healing. I was like, uh, I, I didn't see any that 
you know, that really was like in a meditation format. So I just like, oh, I'm going to create some. And I'm still, I haven't created all of them yet because I haven't work, worked with all the Orisha. And you may not be able to access all of these. You may not be able to access all of these. So a lot of prayer, a lot of healing needs to go on before you start trying to access these or you, you won't be able to. Because you have to be able to embody some of these attributes. Okay. So these are different beings. These angelic beings live inside of us too. Remember, they made us. I wanted you to understand this before we move on to path working. Because once I start understanding this, it was easy for me to jump into path working after this. It, that's just through how the ancestors was leading me to these different books because I had to connect with the Orisha the ancestors led me to connect with the Orisha to do my healing work, to help them on the other side. Okay, so let's move on. You see this. Um, and then he goes on to break all this down. He's showing you each meditation, you know, a brief meditation to connect with each Orisha. So he has one for Shango, Yamoja, Oshun, Ogun, Abatala, or Lamilia, and then uh, Yaori. I love their prayers. If you've never had a Babaloa to pray for you, you are missing out. I mean, their prayers, you can tell they put light in your spirit. The way they pray the prayers are light. That's basically what the prayers are, light. Because I can feel that when I, re I can feel uh, the prayers and I can hear the Babaloa saying the prayers in my head as I read them. That was something. I've never experienced anything like that. But they, I had two of them start praying for me. They said the ancestors told us to pray for you, so that's what we're doing. And I had one, it was like one after the other, they, they were in my inbox when I first started doing work with ancestral work. Okay, so let's move on to path working with the Orisha. Let's move on to that. Since we covered that and you understand how the Orishas are connected to you. Okay, here we go. On to the next book review. And what I went over you went over with you in the handbook of your Ruba, your religious concepts is going to start making more sense now that we're getting into this book. This book is Orisha Rise Initiation and Path Working to Great African Powers by Magus Lyon. Really good book. This is a really good book. I think this is a must have too, because the way he presents the Orisha here, he has created his own format when it goes to, you know, a format when it comes to path working. And this, this is really the, uh, the, the thing that you're missing to connect with the Orisha and the ancestors this understanding and this knowledge is being kept from you. Okay, because this is this is where the core of this practice is. So let me go into it. I have some things highlighted here that we're going to go into. So he has path workings to all of these uh, Arisha. And it's, it's going to be important for you to learn uh, how to do path working. And again, we're talking about fourth and fifth D. If you're ready to work with the fourth and fifth D, the astral world, then this video is for you. For those of you who have been doing the healing work, working with your ancestors, and you're ready to take it to the next level, and you really want to interface with those uh, elevated ancestors and through going through the Orisha, then you can do that right here. 
And so he gives you the format. The first path working you'll need to do is with Ishu. And then go on to the Igungun. You see that there, path working with the Igungun. You have to do that first by way through the ancestors. You have to do, and even if you were to go to any other of our indigenous spiritual practices, you have to go through the Igungun, the ancestors, before you go anywhere. You go through Ishu. Ishu will take you to those elevated ancestors. You usually don't have a problem getting there to the Igungun. And you might even stay there for a while before you even move on to anything else because there's a lot of healing that needs to be done. I'm breaking this down so you can un understand it. And I like that he goes through their power, their attributes, and what they do. He tells you about the Orisha banishing ritual, which is for ceremony. That is to build up your ashe and to clear out any negativity. So if you're not used to doing ceremony magic, uh, you're not used to doing that type of ceremony, I urge you to start learning that because I, I use this. I use this when I'm doing any type of ritual or whatever to elevate my ashe and to clear out any negativity and call in helping spirits. If you are not to this level, this video is not for you. If you're thinking about going to this level, then this video would be beneficial to you. Okay. So let's go through the video. I have some highlighted uh things here and you can find this book on amazon and see he goes through all of these all the path working he set the path working up for you now i know i've made some meditations with some of this path working stuff you can find again on the you can find it on our youtube channel but I haven't done all of these. I haven't done all of these. I've done some of them. Okay. So he's showing you how to raise your consciousness. This, this is going to make sense here in a few minutes. Okay, so we've already been through that. Okay, let's jump in here because this this uh, is titled the introduction. It says the microcosm operates a a hive in collective consciousness, which is merely a refraction of the great one. There can only be one. Everything else is an extension of this one source of consciousness. So, so everything is all mind. I learned this in metaphysical school. Everything is all mind. Everything else is an extension of that mind. We're all sharing the same mind. We're all connected. Do we understand that? Collectively, we are all connected. Everything else is an extension of the source consciousness, which is spirit. And your rubric called the Oladuma Ray. In this volume, Oladuma Ray will be the preferred word in in referring to the primordial divine source of existence when properly intoned or vibrated in ritual or as an invocation this word holds incredible power so when we're in, uh, vibrating this word when we're doing our banishing ritual again we're vibrating words words are power words have vibration and if you're doing if you've ever done the banishing ritual or did any type of invocation before you start a ritual, you know those words will uh, infuse your space with light and get rid of any negativity. Navigating the spheres of consciousness. What did he say again? Nevertheless, through several initiations, through navigating the spheres of consciousness. That's what we're doing. We get in our psychology. The practitioner rises to a gnosis of unity. What he does, he's rise his consciousness to one of unity. This is all about consciousness. This is why healing and all that stuff is recommended. 
it it has to be done before you start accessing it because you're not going to be able to embody these lights or these attributes or ascend to that consciousness if you're not doing it. Here the adept may start to perceive the cosmos as she is its only inhabitant because she is nevertheless to offer useful service to the collective, the Oladimare, the adept must be grounded in Aye or Maku, must be grounded in the earth. Okay, grounded. And if you have done the, if you are familiar with the lesser banisher ritual, Makuth would sound, it, you know what it means. If you've done that ritual, but we're going to go through here and you'll start to understand more. Hence, es esoterically speaking, becoming Godhead of, or the Oladumare in the flesh. Firstly, the neophyte to the tradition must be initiated through the spheres of the Orisha to achieve adepthood within the current, and this does not come without personal sacrifice. However, having preserved and having been anointed by the council of the Orisha, who, who represent the Oladumare in Ori, the Magus must choose to descend like the Orishas before her to recreate the world in the image of the Oladumare. This descent can be hazardous to say the least requires the practitioner or the modern Babalo flow balance energy to earth from the higher rims while not allowing the power thus to gener generate it to become furled during the process. So keeping the energy flowing uh, healthy. Okay, we want to make sure we don't have any blockages. We're working on those blockages and things like that, so we don't get stuck. Therefore, the main objective of this book is to equip the advanced practitioner with the grimmery for self deification or more accurately, the awakening of the divine function within the humanity of the Magus. So we've already showed you where the Orishas are connected to our chakras. We've already showed you that. If you read the Genie Magic Unleashed, that is another book of this author, you will probably know that I invested in the result-oriented magic. Hence, this volume will follow a similar ethos. It is a grimmery for lodges, priesthoods, solitary Maggie who seek to explore the great African powers and achieve the initiation into the sacred currents of that tradition and the Orisha deities, deities who have worked with and through the African priesthoods through the Yoruba tradition and now the diaspora for thousands of years. Essentially, the lower realms of the psych, again, we're going back to psychology. Got to get your psychology together. That's why I had the Know Thyself program, and we still have that over there at the Sister Circle if you're interested in going through that and start implementing some of those exercises. The lower realms of the psyche, by extension, that of the collective human consciousness exists in a state of chaotic darkness. Nevertheless, it must be understood that this darkness requires permission of divine light through uh, from the Ori. We're still looking for looking to enlighten our Ori. The darkness chaos or irrecurdu is an essential part of the creation and serves its purpose dutifully, unwillingly. New ages call this the redemption of darkness, shadow work. There you have it. That's what the Know Thyself program is about. It must be done. I, what have I been saying? What have I been saying here? Shadow work. Do the work. Get to know yourself, your psychology. Do the inner child work. Work on you. However, this is nothing new age about this process. This is character work. This is refinement of the soul. This is soul work. You need to be able to look at your strengths and weaknesses, your traumas, your triumphs. A magician's adepts and Maggie's who have picked up this grimmery, why are the political references necessary in a volume such as this? Results. If you want results, do the shadow work. Do what you need to do. Do the character work. 
If your gnosis in relationship with the high forces and contacts cannot or does not produce meaningful work in creating heaven on earth, then you are merely an intellectual. Nevertheless, the primordial Orishas were released by the Oluduma race to guide the black race and her sympathizers to perform great work. This work entails the great work which we all as travelers on this road of light and wisdom are individually participating. The Orisha seek adepts who, who will assume their God forms in total gnosis of their energies represent how it functions in the cosmos. Their astral personifications is to give context to the primordial energies and should not be worshipped by the adept. Okay, you're going in this astral world. We're not going in to worship the Orisha. We're going to embody the attributes and to heal and to gain our Godhead which is reaching the fifth dimension where we totally can control our consciousness. Like I told you, the astral realm is the real realm. The physical realm is fake earth. You see it for yourself. A magician or babalo can successfully mount and wield the great African powers will perform that the initiated may call what the initiated call miracles. May the miracles you perform bless the world and may especially bless Mother Africa. Self-identity. You don't have that. You don't know yourself. You haven't been digging deep. You don't know your consciousness. How do you think you're going to make a conscious contact with the high vibrational deity? Self-identity is the seed of consciousness. It is balanced by the divine will or Keter, the Ori, the Aha, Asher, Aha, Aa. It's going to make sense in a minute. Or I am that I am. This is the realm of the Orishas. Note that self-identity itself is only an animation and not God, the Almighty. It is not the Oladumre, it is not the Agen or the Insof, nor the source of consciousness. As far as the cosmos is concerned, the Oladumre, both inside and outside, and part of it, he is the unfathomability of the Oladumre, means that the Babalo must work from the Ori, or Kita, his higher consciousness, higher self, when the Orisha are venerated, understood, these their energies channeled by the descendants of the African descent, which is us, or indigenous, indigenous descent, and their sympathizers, the problems that bedevil Africa as a continent, as people will be contained. These problems are rooted in identity. Hence, this is where the solution resides. This is the spiritual work akin to the undertaking of John D with the knocking and knocking angels in the help helping establish the British Empire. So John D established this ceremony to reach these angels, such as Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Ariel. He established this ritual. And this is one of the rituals that he's going to be using that has been tweaked to call on their rishas. Now, I've seen this uh, in voodoo as well. I've seen this vanishing ritual in voodoo, but the names were changed for the voodoo lowers. So I'm thinking to myself, how old is this ritual? How old is it? You know, but John D did this and he started to evoke. The invoke is different. Invoke is internally when you go into the astral uh, plane and you invoke these energies inside of you, evoke is when you bring them on the physical plane, which is really for someone who is experienced. You are not experienced to be doing that. That's why we're going to the astral plane. That's the safest way for you to work with the work with the Orisha or any deity for that matter, even your ancestors. Okay, who are the Orishas? Let's dive in here. Who are the Orishas? 
the light descended. Let's see his perspective. Because what I've noticed about this too is, which I think is good, that each one perspective is di different. It's, it's slightly different uh, on the Orisha. And I like that because it, that shows independent thinking and shows authenticity. So I like that. We all are connecting, but we're finding our way to connect and understand. The light descended. It was not yet a physical light, but rather a spiritual light. The light of being conscious. The darkness is twins. Comprehended it not. Nevertheless, I conspired against the light and sought to corrupt its path. This spiritual light traveled at a speed of thought, for soon it became thought. And as it crystallized through the spheres of supernal, the mental, the astral, and the gross, it became stable and cool enough to be manipulated by forces counterintuitive to the source. So we're hearing this source again. We're hearing this story again. Like this, this is being uh, redone all over again. Uh, listen to what it says. These rebellious forces forged and produced a despicable facsimile of the light. This was a false light. It mimicked life, but only had an existence by adulterating the true light or as shaped from the Oladumaray. Hence humans, instead of telepathy, developed telecommunication. Instead of teleportation, developed transportation. Instead of service to others, humanity was steered towards service to self. Finally, Aye, the spirit of earth in humanity's delusion ceased to be living a living being and became instead for a man, a piece of rock floating in outer space. So he's telling you this, this is the story of the patriarchs. And so what I want to point out here is we hear this same story. And basically what I'm hearing here from my perspective, if I'm hearing this, this religion being tweaked for man, these things, X, Y chromosome. Again, we're back to the, uh, uh, he said man, to be living being and became instead for man, a piece of rock floating in outer space. Eventually, these immoral predatory forces started mass producing from genetic manipulation more humans. You hear that? To incarnate on the lower planes, these incarnates were not humans at all, but rather empty soulless vessels that served as conduits for the children of abomination residing in the darkness. These are the soulless ones that constitute for the stupendous percentage of the Earth's population today. The true humans are enslaved, spiritually tortured, recycled in the astral and physical realm. Slavery is not human invention any more than oxygen is not. So he's letting you know when we're bringing these children through our portals on this physical plane, they become slaves. Because this is the false earth. Like I said, you are not your body. When you really start to understand meditation and uh, journey work and working with your ancestors and your spirit guides, you will understand that that world is creating this world. This world cannot exist without that one. Because everything was born in the mind first. This is what we're talking about. We were first in a fifth dimension. We were doing uh, telepathy. We were teleporting before this got turned into a religion. So that is my understanding of it in perspective of this.
but I'm hearing this same story take place in each one of these traditions or cultures. We already went through the doggone tribe. We already went through that. And I'm moving on. I'm showing you the discrepancies there. And I've heard a lot of, uh, I'm not going to go into too, more, too much detail. I'll go into more detail about that on the sister circle because that's what I'm going to save that for. But I'm just showing you it's here in this story. Nonetheless, the Arisha still reside on the true spiritual earth, which their chief, the Orisha Abatala, under the instruction of the Olodumire, created general humanity resides on false earth, ruled tyrannically under the false light in sort of depraved in a sort of depraved form. Farm. Humans are utilized as food source and as a basis of burden. Many experience this as depression, mental or spiritual exhaustion, as well as palpable sense of lack of control in their lives. All these impulsive behaviors. You're hearing it here. You're hearing again here. I've been, you know, here talking about this. You on your spiritual journey, you have not understood this yet. This is why we're not bringing any souls to our portals anymore because we realize what this is. Okay. Hence the primordial Orisha of true light shrouded in love with and wisdom seek to see God, seek to guide the call, guide the called back to spiritual earth, the so-called heaven of Christian's fantasies. But who are the Orishas really? Let's see his perspective on that. This question has been summer, summarily discussed in the last chapter. Nevertheless, let us delve deeper. Firstly, the Orisha are high vibrational entities who reside in the world and a and universe as far removed from Earth as expenditious is from a snail. It is a long way. When I did a travel there to see the Orisha, and I haven't been back. I haven't been back there. It's so far beyond space and time. They are all a group of intelligence contacted the false earth through the peoples of Yoruba eons ago. So they contacted the false earth through the people eons ago. Similarly, the 17th century occultist John D., who served as court astronomer and advisor to Queen Elizabeth I, had received contact with the Anakian, Anakian angels. Okay, so if you don't know who John D. is, John D. is the first one, uh, the first European who got his hand on, hands on this ceremony and start evoking angels on the earth plane for Queen Elizabeth. He started evoking. Evoking is totally different when you call them here on the earth plane. Invoking when you open them up with inside yourself and go to the astral plane. But John D did something different. John D evoked the energy here. The Orisha are not angels and operate on a far higher frequency than agenda. Since they possess utilized free will, their realm, which is accessible via astral projection or spirit vision to the trained Babalawo or Mag Maggie or Shaman, exists in the upper worlds and its perfect ecosystem as envisioned by the Oladumare. You can go there. I have been there. Okay, so you're seeing it here for yourself. I wanted to show you that. The Orisha are primordial archetypes at the very boundaries of manifest creation and in practice help seed 
the real planet Earth with humanity. These deities are melanated. They are black. Humanity is kept in a low vibrational state by a host of malevolent entities, but primarily by the collective that I will refer to as the Lords of Lower Darkness. They are not evil, just a moral opportunistic parasite. This volume would not give too much attention to them as they are ultimately inconsequential. Okay, so I explained that about patriarchy already. We went over that. We talked about that. I don't want to get on my soapbox again about that because that is not the topic here. Okay, moving on. The initiation to the Arisha. The light is the source of all life and existence. Therefore, on the terrestrial earth, it is clear that without the unconditional service and effort sense of the planetary sun, almost all biological life on earth would be extinguished. This is a given. However, your true nature is ultra biological and the soul exists in an infinite dimension being unencumbered, unencumbered by time or space as it were. Hence, the true life of the human spirit or existence transcends the mere influence of the physical. Because you are light. You are just like the source of light that created you. Okay? But you are, uh, again, you are in this biological suit. The light that instigates, nourishes, and perpetrates the existence of the soul is similarly of spiritual origin. The divine architect is not merely the light, but is also the instigator, perpetrator of the light which is our own, our spiritual cosmic sustenance. Okay, so I just explained that to you. The Arisha are rarefied aspects of this information or frequency of, ver of the very same divine light that is the basis of our existence. Interesting, melanin is attrinated to the true divine vibration that the Arisha embody because they are made of this same melanin. Melanin is responsible for the whole universe. The whole universe is melanated. We are the first indigenous people here, organic, uh, made from this melanin, okay? The Orisha from a psychological model perspective are therefore active aspects of the site that can be invoked and embodied to connect one to vital aspects of their own godhood. So they're showing you how to activate this energy within yourself too. We talked about this with the chakras, with each Orisha being assigned to each chakra and each chakra is a portal to that Orisha. The African Maggie realized and romanticized this truth in their veneration of the Orisha Ifa. So they're letting you know that they, they uh, ascended to Godhood by activating these powers within themselves, manifesting them in the physical realm and the Yoruba mystical tradition in general. The orcas act as an energetic invocation and spiritual technologies that open the portals to these realms of consciousness. So they let you know there's invocations that opens up portals to your consciousness so you can have this mystical experience. Initiation into the Orisha in its fullest intention is therefore an excoration, excursion through your inner kingdom. You have to go within. You have to go within to access this. The exploration of the powers that lie latent and furrow in your own sight, they're there dormant. When you experience absorbed in gnosis and exercise these centers or spheres of power within the adept can aid immensely in not only the work of the of enlightenment but in channeling this light into this world because you're going to embody these attributes and energies as you begin to heal and open up these portals the light of abundance peace and love gratitude that is home of the soul the tree of life, as understood Kabbalistically, remember as above, so below. Hence, when you interact with the Orishas through spirit vision, pathworking, or astral travel, 
know that you are interacting with parts of your own site. Because again, you're exploring your mind, your collective consciousness. Okay, you were there. We're all connected by source, by consciousness, uh, all a part of this one mind. Okay. As well as with deities in the external world of the greater universe, by traveling up the Orisha tree of life from Ogun through the Olamiya, the student can transverse their inner space, invoking, again, invoking, this is within, the essential aspects of these deities within their own sight. You may climb Olamiya through any of the paths in the diagram below. However, the quickest, most balanced path is from Ogun to Igungun through the Abatala, then the Olamiya. This is similar is the approach to the middle pillar path described in the perspective of Zohar by Western adepts like Israel Regardi, which we'll talk about that more as we move on. Okay, so now we're looking at the tree of life here. Uh, you see it here, you got the Ornamilla, then you got uh, Abatala, I think Yamoja, Shango, Ajay. Uh, who is this on the side? Yamoja. Why does it seem like Abatala? Let me go look at the bigger screen here. Oh, that's Eladumare. Okay, Oladumare, Yamoja, Shango, Ajay, Abatala, Ishu, Ogun. Who is this? I can't really see that light is eh, is in my way, so I can't really see there that that on um, the that green. But I thought that it looks like no, is it Oshun? Okay, that might be Oshun, Oshun, Igungun, and Ogun. So this is the Orisha tree of life he's talking about. It sort of looks like DNA, doesn't it? Sort of looks like DNA, this tree of life. But this is the tree of life. You'll see that in Kabbalah too. If you have not studied Kabbalah, uh, you know, like I said, this is a little bit advanced for the ones who's ready to move forward a little bit in their uh, spiritual practice and ready to go to the astro, tree, astro realm and work with 4D and 5D, which is going to be your, uh, we're talking about your, your mind now. That's why people are getting so much into mental awareness and all that now. We're going to the 5D. Okay, so make sure you're looking at this because you'll see this again in the Kabbalah tree of life. But now we're working for the tree, uh, Orisha tree of life. And I've seen this, uh, that banishing ritual in Voodoo with, with the laws being mentioned. I've seen it uh, with the angels being mentioned in Christ Judeo-Christianity, and I'm seeing it being done here with the Orisha. I'm like, how old is this uh, this ritual, this ceremony? How old is it? Because I've seen it in Voodoo, and I've seen it here with the Orisha. And you understand what I'm talking about as we move on. But this is the Orisha tree of life. You also see it in Kabbalah. Kabbalah uses this tree of life too. Now, I've only seen it, uh, and I was surprised to see it uh, in Voodoo. When I saw it in Voodoo, I was like, oh my gosh, they got the banishing ritual in here. What? I couldn't believe it. I was like, how many others are using this? I mean, is this new? Because the first person I see using it was John D. But John D doesn't really tell where he got that ritual from as well. Path working is a variation of spirit vision and involves the process of astrally projecting up and around the paths of the Orisha tree of life. This is done for initiatic, initiatic purposes and to gain information, instructions, meet the Orisha and ask favors of them. A babalowo may travel a system of path animating from the center of the earth to the to God in order to learn more about the character of the deity, receive instructions, and crave a boon. I don't know what that means. Uh, the crave uh, and crave a boon. I don't know what that means. Uh, some popular writers have described any visualized 
journey as path working. And you'll see some of these, uh, some of this information is oracle, oral, I'm sorry, oral, and they pass it down orally and they will guide you through a path working. And this has become the popular meaning of the term today. Nevertheless, the origin of path working is truly rooted in the antiquity and was subsequently popularized and developed by golden dawn adepts like Samuel Little McGregor Mathers. Nonetheless, the orally preserved sacred Odu, the Lagoon, Pataki, Oricus, and the Yorubas were coded path workings to and between the deities and elementals that were romanticized when correctly understood and implemented utilizing elemental correspondences and symbology. These archetypical symbols offer a potent route to the Orisha current and initiatory route for the initiate and neophyte. Verily, elemental path working is a splendid technique for developing personal skills, gaining information, exploring the nature of spirituality and psychoenergetic integration of fragmented aspects of the site. Again, we're working with the mind again. Like if we're doing any type of spiritual work, even with your ancestors, you got, a lot of this is going to be intuitively. It's going to be an inner knowing. Okay, so the more we know about ourselves, the better we're going to be able to work with these energies. The more we heal ourselves, the better we're going to be able to work with these energies. And Orisha Rising, the Magister Temple of Chief Babalo, Magus Lion, has received and developed path work into the great African powers vomited directly by the Orishas themselves during extended shamanistic voyages to the upper world. So he said he went to the upper world and the Orishas gave him this formula to travel there. Although sometimes called progression rituals and part of the repertory of the magical group, path working can actually be performed by solo practitioner with minimum ritual paraphernalia. However, adequate pre-ritual banishing of the ritual, banishing of the ritual environment is essential. Path working is of course not restricted to exploration of the Orisha or indeed the Kabbalistic tree of life and can be utilized to access other realms of existence and contacts in the multiverse. So we, we remember, remember me talking about the 5D? Most commonly, path working involves process of motion, visualization of walking along some type of path or road. It may be that of a physical road, a road in the mind or some other type of set of pattern defined as such. Okay, so now we're moving on. Let's see here. Each path working is structured into four main statements. Each statement corresponding to one of the elements, namely earth, earth, air, wind, and fire. The consciousness of the practitioner acts as the fifth element, spirit. Okay, because you're again, you are creating this also this astral world, this spirit world that you are visiting. Okay, so all the elements are already there. Using her, her knowledge of magic, spiritual practice, occultism, santeria, voodoo, or gray magic, the practitioner can break new ground by incorporating elements from all of these traditions into one coherent practice. Path working is not a casual undertaking, for it means trials, hardships, temptations, but ultimately triumph and spiritual power. First, one must pray to the Orisha to be allowed to explore their realms. Then one's magical power must be developed until he can sustain himself in spirit vision, eye of the mind for extended amounts of time. So you got to be able to maintain this astral world within your mind, this virtual reality, this 5D multiverse within your consciousness for amount of time. I would say, you know, starting off at 20 20 to 30 minutes. Some people go longer, but to get a good spirit vision going, 20 to 30 minutes. And you can start, you know, working with your astral senses by memorizing how things look, 
how apple look, how does an orange look, how does it smell. These are ways that you can strengthen your astral senses so you can have the best experience when you go into your into this astral realm. Okay, because that's where you're going to be projecting that. It's already in your sight. We just explained we're all consciousness. Everything is consciousness. We just explained that. Okay. When such conditions have been met, the initiate begins their journey. How to path work. Formulate an intention for your path work and exercise, your path work and exercise, and write it down. Study to show that yourself approved by knowing the characteristics that correspond with colors, temperament of the deity, or reach you whom you intend to approach, if possible, were the colors. So my thing, I want to immerse myself in this experience as much as possible, because uh, this is all for your psychology. It's not needed, but to condition your mind, to set your intentions, to get in the flow of it. I would wear the colors as well. If you can't wear the colors of the Orisha, please wear white because that's, that's ceremonial for our ancestors. You can just wear white. Make a make it a big deal when you do this. It just, again, it conditions your mind and it sets the t intentions for a successful journey. Purify and sanctify your body in ritual space, making sure you will not be disturbed for about 30 minutes. Vanishing and invoking techniques are discussed in, in the next chapter. So we're going to get to that. It's going to make sense when I talk about the lesser vanishing ritual and those rituals or ceremonies. It's going to make sense here in a minute. Sit comfortably and imagine each sequence of the path working one after other, utilizing your imagination, which is akin to the chariot of the gods. So your imagination is the key to open all of this up. That's why they tell you imagination is so important. Creativity is so important. That's why everything you see was born from that. Everything you see, look around you. It was born from the mind first. In the astral world, which is creating this world. And you can't even imagine the possibilities in the astral world until you start consciously visiting there. And you'll see all this neat stuff. I, like I told you, I was in this cave. And, 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 and in this cave was other caves that were worlds. If you walked into them, you were in another, another universe, another place. Spend at least one minute in each path working, making sure to utilize all your imaginative senses, astral senses. See how he puts that there? So when you do guided meditations, you're really using your astral senses. That's a good way to strengthen them. At the end of the path work and return to your normal reality ground by performing mundane chores or eating a light meal, make sure to journal your experiences in your magical journey. A journal. So this is for you. Your insight. And it is some information to be had there. But when you go there, test the spirit, ask questions. Come back and test the information because that's how you know that your experience is real as well. If you want to make sure your experience is real, ask the Orisha questions. Only they would know the answer to. And then go research them. Because I was asking stuff I had no knowledge of. And they were giving me answers. I was like, wow, am I making this up? Come to find out, did the research on it? No, I was not making it up. It was real. Okay. The following ritual, ritual is an adaptation of the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. The operation itself holds immense power in evacuating a space of almost psychic, of every psychic influence. It extends into the astral realms and while creating a bit of ruckus is effective. A banishing as you will find in the Grimmery. The archangel, archangelic influence, though, still very valid, have been swapped for the Orishas. So he took out the archangels, which you see, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel. He took those out. Here are the seven great African powers have been summoned and embedded into the operation. So he took that out and he put the Orisha in. He took the, the angels, the Judeo-Christian angels out, and he put in the Orisha. 
So now he's called it the Orisha uh, Banishing Ritual. Serves to balance the magician's psyche with repeated performance, dislodged parasitic entities lurking in the practitioner's psyche, affecting the auric field. Consequently, this sustained practice, among others, will increase the Babalaw's spiritual awareness and connection with their reaches even before the path working or the invocation so before i do any path working uh, before i do any uh ritual ceremony i usually do this lesser ban banishing ritual first but i usually use the angels i've tried to uh i've practiced with the orisha banishing ritual I'm still working on memorizing it, but I memorized the lesser, lesser banishing ritual because I use it all the time in my rituals or practices. Okay, these are this is not for beginners. This is someone who's been studying this knowledge, who has been uh, tweaking how they communicate with spirit, who wants to strengthen their communication with spirit. This who this video is for. Okay, so I'm going to move on. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments. Okay, how to perform the uh, Orisha Banishing Ritual. Okay, so you, there is the Lesser Banishing Ritual. There's plenty of here on this YouTube channel that's been recorded here if you want to look at that. But in here, he is, he is called, we're calling out to the Olodumare first. And he has these, uh, these prayers that you say. So you're going to stand or sit comfortably in the middle of your, your, your room. Make sure everything is clean, breathing slowly, you know, and deeply, uh, and above your head, you're going to imagine, you know, the Ladumare uh, above you, uh, the crown of your head, like you're opening up your crown of your head and you're seeing this, uh, this large Orisha above your head. Again, you are using your astral senses to, to activate this. Okay, so he gives you directions on how to perform the uh, Orisha Banishing Ritual. And uh, he still keeps this. Now face the east in tone from your diagram and say, Yah, hey, va, hey. Uh, Yah, hey, va, they. So he's still keeping that. And what's important when you're doing the Banishing Ritual, you're going to move up. When you make this star, you're going to go up because you're banishing. You're sending things away from you. Just imagine when you make this pentagram, uh, when you use your wand or your finger, whatever one you have, you're going to make this pentagram going up because you're banishing away anything within your sphere. Okay, that's important to know. When you're banishing, you're moving up. This is often missed when doing your ceremony or ritual, so don't miss that. Yes, it matters which way you're drawing that star because up from this side, you're banishing. Are we getting that? And you can pause to read this if you need to. Okay, so going to the next one. And here he's telling you the words that he said, these are the exact words that you say to do the lesser banisher ritual. And then he goes on, instead of invoking the archangels, here he begins to invoke Oya. He said, now take a moment to acknowledge the four flaming pentagrams around you. You've already did the pentagram, so that's what you've done here with vibrating these names. You're going to go, ah, oh, nah, ye. They got to be vibrated out loud because they're frequencies. Vibrations. And, and you are banishing these other things away from you. And you are sealing your space. So each time you move around, you're going to be drawing this star. 
go back to it, this star up. You're going to turn. Each time you turn, you're going to be drawing a star and sealing it, which he goes through all of this right here. And you're going to do Oshun. It's facing east. So it's usually Archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel in this when you're turning around and making these uh, pentagrams. But now he's not using that. He's using the Orisha. And if you want to understand more about that, you can go ahead and do some research on the lesser banishing ritual. And then he goes here to call out all the Orisha and their attributes. So before you even get started to doing your path work and you want to do this first, you want to clean your space, make everything, again, as ritualistic and as sacred as possible. When you're doing this kind of work, coming in contact with these sort of being, I, I recommend it for the path working because it's going to make it that much more effective. This is the real work, you guys. This is some of the work. Okay, so you see that there. Now, advanced or reach, uh, reach uh, invoking ritual. Uh, let me go here. Furthermore, the Orisha invoking ritual serves to infuse energy into the magician's sight, often with repeated performance, which strengthen and expand the auric field. So when you start doing these rituals, and you will feel that too, it not only uh, clears the space, but it will strengthen your ashe as well. This can be observed in daily life as increased personal magnetism, immunity to common infections, expanded intuition, clairvoyance, lucid dreaming, astral projection, among other effects. So the more you do this ritual, because you're going to say it with more and more confidence, and through those powers of the words, you are insulating your energy. Is this making sense to you? Similar, some practitioners have noticed quicker physical manifestation of emotion-powered thoughts. Okay? So when we're invoking, let's go down. Begin here. You're going down. Okay? So you see that invoking, we go down. We go down when we're invoking. In... We're going in for invoking, out for banishing. In for invoking, out for banishing. So these are very important. So remember this when you begin to do your invoking, because you're going to do this invoking now. And this time when you draw the pentagram, you're going to go inward. You're going downward, inward. We can say inward. You're going inward in, inside of the star. And we're going to make the star. This does matter. Because you're working with energies here. Okay? And so to do this, he's showing you how to perform uh, the ritual, calling out to the uh, Dumeray, and say it this way, slowly this way, but can't. Again, we want to vibrate every syllable. And he's going down here. You see that, that pentagram going inward? And he's in, uh, saying it again. He's saying, yad hey va they again, facing the east. Because now he's invoking. Going downward. Adonai, okay? He's going to the south, and he's repeating this again, drawing another pentagram. Each time you turn uh, east, 
south, north, and west, you are going to draw a pentagram. But if you get this book, he goes directly through that. You can, like I said, uh, do the lesser banishing. You can do a research on a lesser banishing ritual. It's everywhere. And you can start this on your own. And you can pause and come back and look at, at this to see how it's formatted. Okay, so again, he ins in inserts the uh, the Orisha here instead of the guardian angels in here as well. Okay, these should be done before you even start your path working if you're going to work with the Orisha the way he has set this up. Okay, he's already set the stage for you to work with the Orisha. The first Orisha you're going to work with is Ishu or Elegba, which either one, you know, it's the same thing, you guys. Two faces of the same thing. So you're going to call on Ishu. And this is some of the path workings. You can do a ritual bath. We, we talked about ritual bath in the handbook of Yoruba religious concepts. We talked about that. They named the herbs and all that if you're interested in that. So making sure you can even make your a ritual even that much better if you want to tweak it to use some of these uh, herbs that's associated with the Orisha. And so making sure so he's telling you he's already put it down for you make sure you clean make sure uh you can visualize being protected by a white light you'll see that in my meditations too make sure you're grounded and then utilize the the orisha banishing ritual and the orisha invoking ritual either one of these are optional i would always start with the uh orisha banishing ritual Okay, just to clear things out. Now, while in a comfortable position, visualize yourself going through the following path working. At the end of the last path, call Ishu, Ishu, Ishu three times. He will be there with you. Make sure your requests are asked to be guided to your preferred Orisha. So he's letting you know before you start any path working, you're going to invoke issue first just like you would do in any ritual any physical ritual you're going to do this in the astral realm as well okay so let's go on again this is the path working because if you're making your path working your guided meditation these are the things that need to be in here Okay, these are the things that need to be in here for your path working. An old man with a crooked walking stick on a dirt path. The old man does, a, does away with his walking stick and begins dancing energetically like a young man to the sound of drumming. Large puffs of dust from his prancing, prancing fill the air. A young child dressed in red and black carrying a small red clay pot filled with water stands in front of a seven doors that the child pauses when walks through the seventh door in the middle of a barren desolate field. A fierce burn fire burns. Its flames attract the attention of seven black ravens overhead the fly that fly anti-clockwise around the flame. So these are the path working that needs to be in your meditation. They need to be in your meditation when you make, you can use any of these. You, you have what four to choose from. So you can use these in your path working. That is what you're going to see. He's already gave you a path working, something to work from here. Okay. The next you're going to see the Eagle Goon. I've been there, uh, Elegba, Ishu took me there. I don't, when I see him, uh, he's always on a boat. 
He's always fishing on the boat. And he, I get on the boat with him. That's how I see his shoe. That's how Elect becomes to me. He's always on the boat. I rarely ever see him on the road. I don't know what that's about. He's always on the water on the boat. That's how I that's how my psych picks him up. I don't know how many others that's had that experience. The, okay, the Gungun is the archetype of your true purpose in this world. That purpose is to ascend, and by doing so, lift all your ancestors and descendants with you to the new earth. Again, we're going to the astral realm. This is the new earth. The new earth is the astral realm. It is 5D. It is not uh, incarnating to this planet anymore. This is it. This is why you're seeing women walk away, finding out about more about the divine feminine and they're closing their portals. This is the realization that we're coming to. Those of you, you know, this might be advanced for those of you that just began your healing journey and you don't understand the shadow work, you're still working through a lot of this stuff. You are physically connected to them. When they hurt, the reverberation will be felt by you. And I, you can, you can feel that heaviness. I told you how uh, I had to do that Orisha prayer to uh, lift a lot of that heaviness up. And how that experience was. I can feel the shift. If 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 uh, if uh, the idea that you cannot know who you are if you cannot call the name of your ancestors going back seven generations, the ability to call the names of your ancestors is believed to make it possible to see our Ori consciousness in the world. This is uniquely African worldview related to both the Yoruba of good character. Here we go, back to the good character work, shadow work, and your Yoruba concept of reincarnation. Calling the name of your ancestors going back seven generations mean you will be able to identify your own previous reincarnation. Most children in a traditional Yoruba family have naming ceremony. Within a week after their birth, the ritual includes divination used to identify the former existence of the child and to identify if the child, where the child comes from. Identify if the child comes from the mother or the father's lineage. This identification gives the developing child a solid information on the previous lessons learned. In this way, spiritual growth becomes an ongoing process that does not have to begin with a, a new, with each incarnation. That's a beautiful thing. Wish we had that here. It's like giving yourself a script and this is where you left off and this is where you need to pick up. You might be strong, pretty, tall, fast, artistic, cursed with the genetic disease. This is part of your soul genetics, infinitely more important than Mudane genetics. You cannot wish away your ancestors no matter how wonderful or horrible they are or were. That, 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 that you can't. But you can do the work though. You have the Igugum, the elevated ancestors who are always cheering you on. They are you and you are them. To find peace and lasting prosperity, you must walk through an intention to free and lift your ancestors. Are you you're seeing it here? I don't care what what you're doing, what kind of I don't care. If you're not doing this, what are you doing? If you're not doing this, what have you been doing? If you are African, especially of the diaspora, or which you, we're indigenous, we're coming into new knowledge now, there is a great chance some of them still think they are enslaved in torment, seeking relief, peace, and sometimes vision. Google powers. What is the Ingu powers? Non-exhaustive list. Like I said, you can work with the Ingu for a long time. Like I'm still working with the ancestors. They took me to meet the Orishas. They let me talk to the Orishas, but now I'm still working with the Ingu I have not been back to uh, speak with the Orishas. I've been doing a lot of healing work here. Ingu can help you with the soul retrieval, 
reintegration, connect with your ancestors for a purpose of empowerment, restore purpose, security, clarity, restoring stolen timelines and destiny. Elevate your consciousness and teach you how to be fearless even in the midst of apparent opposition. Gives you access to ancestral wisdom and healing. That's where that hoodoo come from. You say Google. That's where all that magic and all that stuff is going to come from. It's going to come from the Igungun. You think it's going to come from the Orisha. The only time it will come from the Orisha if it's something out of range that they can't do. And that's very rarely. Very rarely. And when you go to see who your head is, when it comes to uh, Ifa and you're and you rub up, you're trying to see who your head is. You're only going to like a denomination of that religion. You're only going to be like if you are Oshun child, then you're going to be in the Oshun temple. That is the part of Ifa you're going to work, but it still works together as a full body of the whole. But that's the section you're going to work in. But you still going to be communicating mainly with your ancestors, the Gungoons. Very rarely would you, you know, you, you're you going to be serving uh, that Orisha. You're serving that Orisha. Once they become your head, you serve them. You have all that, that shrine, all that stuff, all those things put up in your house and you begin to sh uh, serve the Orisha. That it is not an easy job. You have some people, they serve many spirits. You can see that in kind of in hoodoo too. When you start erecting these altars, again, you have to serve. You can work with them temporarily, but if you're going to erect the altar like that, it takes work. They can destroy hexes, unwind generational curses, and parasites. Can strengthen your magical work and knowledge. And I just say that. Showing you dark and hidden wisdom can empower your work with the dead, make you victorious in competition and business. They can do it all right here. You must approach all Orishas, including the Igungun, firstly through Ishu. But again, he's giving you the perimeters there. There are a few ways to connect with the Igungun, like he's, he's going to the lower wars. Remember, I told you I went to the Lower worlds, and I work with the uh, Igungun, and sometimes they'll take you to the middle world if there's something that you, you know, especially if you're doing your magic, they'll take you to the middle world. But the lower world, you're going to meet the Igungun there through the shamanic journeying or elemental path working. Here shall utilize the elemental path working. Shamanic journeying will be addressed in the subsequent chapter. It would serve the student to memorize issue path workings before, again, uh, invoking the Igungun because you need to call on issue first. He is the guy. He's going to take you to the Igungun. Make sure to have a ritual bath. Like this, make sure you're clean. Make sure you're comfortable. Set your intentions. You're going to call on the Igun, call on them uh, twice, three times. And Ishu will take you to the Igun. Make sure you have your, like I said, make sure you have your intentions written down. What do you want to do when you go there? What is your intentions? Is it for healing? It is to find something out. Is it to find, you know, what remedy or workings you should be doing, magic you should be doing? What is it? There, there's really, the possibilities are endless with, with this. It really is. Depending on your intentions. When done with your request, only make one request at a time or sense that the Igungun is in the communion. Thank them and issue and gradually come back to this reality. Ground yourself by journaling your experience and then perform mundane chores, have a light meal, drink enough water, water stores information and vibrations from the divine and your body is made of 80% of, of water. Okay, so we've went over this. I've showed you where 
you can communicate with the Arisha via 5D because we're going to 5D now. And a lot of us have been talking about 5D. You are able to go and access a lot of this through your consciousness. And so those of you who are wanting to do this kind of work, I have provided you a template to start from. Okay. Uh, overall, I think this was a good book, especially when it came to path working, because I was looking for something that was more Afrocentric. These are the books that I found that were more Afrocentric because I knew they were doing it. Commit. I knew this was old esoteric knowledge. I knew we were doing it, but I was wanting to find something closer uh, that was more ancestral. And I ran across these books. And they do work. Okay. Well, I hope you found this video insightful. I hope it provided you some knowledge some ideas, made you curious, made you want to amp up your uh, your ancestors' work, your own spiritual work, okay? If you have any questions for me, put them in the comments, you know, engage with me. Tell me what you thought about this video. What is your perspective on this, okay? Thanks for being here with me today. Light, love, namaste, I share love one.